I thought I'd pop out and uh, do another quick uh, video from the glass house. I've um, bought off, uh, over the last few years, I've bought off a company online uh, these metal trays right here. They're only there. Uh, and they sell them at fixed sizes, but also they offer to make them up to a size that you want, uh, which I've done now for all the benching in here. So you can see. Uh, trays along the top there and now recently as in yesterday I'd received an order for trays to go under the benches and what makes these trays great is that you can sort of maximize your space so uh, I used to use sort of small plastic trays like this or uh, there are seat trays a bit like that uh, some of those I've got some of them I've been given uh, but these aluminium trays, and you have them made to size, uh, you can make much better use of the space because you don't get the lots of the sort of the edges of these trays, like when they butt together, you don't get lots of those uh, wasting space. You can get a lot more uh, on and under your benches. And I've got them all going all along uh, the side bench here. I've got some two along the back there. I've got two small ones, uh, sorry, four small ones here, seed trays not seat trays, sorry, shelves, shelf trays. You can get them made to really whatever size you want. Um, and they've been incredibly uh, useful in packing stuff in. Anyway, that's uh, a little tip. On the cost of them, they're not, uh, I mean, on mass, probably like I've gotten, they, the cost does build up. But compared with buying plastic trays or even sort of dishes like this to stand plants on, uh, they work out at about uh, 11 or 12 pounds each, which I don't think is bad value for money considering the coverage you get and what you can actually uh, fit, fit on the trays. Anyway, uh, I might post a link to the company below this video if anyone is interested uh, in exploring them. Ah, the other thing I would say is they come with, when they're made, where are we, the edges there, they cut the edges and leave these open slits in them, which is fine for drainage if that's what you want. It isn't, it isn't what I want, and I found online a, a metal putty uh, that you um, sort of mix up with, you know, blend up with your fingers and, 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 and put it into place, and it, it forms a watertight seal. It's a little bit of a faff, especially when you've got lots of trays, but it's worth doing, if I can zoom in. There, is that show a clear picture? No, not particularly. Anyway, it's worth doing if you want your trays to be uh, watertight, which I do, but if you don't, if you want to leave them with the drainage in the corners, then just leave them as they are, but the putty uh, has really helped as well. Anyway, that's, that's it in terms of my little handy hint for the day. Uh, just do a few quick shots, the Oleander. Uh, I've got three oleander in pots there, they're blooming their hearts out, they're uh, absolutely stunning. Um, and I think I've said this before, but they were sort of £7 Tesco bargains at the start of lockdown. And they're really uh, loving it in here. Um, Begonia Metallica here is not one of my, or hasn't been one of my favourites. Uh, years ago my neighbour gave me a, a small cutting and I had it for a short while and lost uh, it over a winter I think. Um, and never really sort of came back to it uh, until more recently. Um, but this one is doing amazingly well. It's absolutely covered these beautiful, typical begonia flowers. So I've sort of fallen in love with it a bit more again. There, it's that one. And then I've got a, a, a sort of a pink and white or pink and yellow lantana here. Which is a bargain from a local garden centre, and that's doing. I'll focus then. That's doing very well. Uh, my bargain begonia luxuriance, which was a Facebook uh, purchase a few weeks ago, is doing well. And then lots of colour from the bougainvillea, the orange lantana, the heliotrope cherry pie plant, and a few. Pelagoniums. There. Now, I work quite long hours, so now the days are shorter. I don't get to come out here uh, when it 
it's daylight during the week anymore. Uh, so it's quite nice to have time to get out here during the weekend. But I recently bought, I'm not sure how close I can get, I recently bought a, a sort of a plug-in light bulb there. Uh, and that's on a, on a hive switch down there. And that's, uh, I can turn that on before I come out and the low energy light bulb warms up for 10 minutes and gets brighter. But it does mean I can come out here when I'm uh, back late from work and, uh, and it's dark, which is a pleasure. Uh, a few seedlings along here. There. Um, I can't, the name escapes me. Uh, something agarvifolium. I can't think what the, the something is. Uh, escapes me. It begins with E. But I've bought some seeds uh, over the summer and sort of grown them on, and they seem to be growing very well there. Aryngium. Aryngium agarvifolium, I think. There. And then my carnivorous plants. They're doing really well. The only one that isn't, and I've mentioned this before, uh, is where are we? That one there, Saracenia purple haze. I'm not sure whether it's me, whether it's it there, uh, but that's the only picture there that it's produced or had all summer. Uh, there might be some baby ones coming out, so I'm not going to ditch it. I'll hopefully it's just sulking this year and it'll be fine next year. But the rest of them, there's this absolute sort of forest of pictures uh, pictures coming off them I need to have a look at what I've what I'm to do with those whether I cut them back or not and rather disgustingly there's a half there's a dead fly there that's sort of half escaped not focus it very well through a hole there which is not very attractive oh and actually there there's something's eaten it and split it and they've escaped but I'm pleased with those. Uh, I only bought those this year off uh, Hans Carnivorous Plants and uh, they've done incredibly well there. There's the Pinguicula crostina that I nearly lost earlier on in the year that's bounced back very well. And Venus fly traps there full of trapped flies. Looking amazing. Uh, I think that's it really. Begonias, there's my griffon uh, there. That's gonna go into work. I bought some of these aluminium trays for the window sills in my office at work, so I can take some uh, more plants in. Um, but the griffon is doing really well. And um, I took, as I mentioned in previous videos, seven cuttings earlier on in the year that grew really well. I gave a couple to Plant Friend Rich, one to Jerry of Planting Memories, and the other uh, four uh, I've sold uh, online, which was good. So I've taken another load of cuttings there. They're in, in there, my heated propagator. So uh, I'll be potting those up uh, when they root and uh, probably sell those on as well. Uh, and then Mishmi Silver, Begonia Mishmi Silver, which was one I, I sort of liked, uh, but wasn't massively taken with. Um, but it's really filled out and thickened up and uh, it's an absolute beauty. I mean, this, I just, that's what I love about the begonias, the sort of the texture and colour on the leaves. And then if I can get in, that sort of deep ruby red underneath there. And then begonia winjonesii from Krug Farm Plants in North Wales. Uh, the leaves I haven't done an awful lot, but in the last week or so, it's really come out into these sort of sugar pink coloured flowers. So uh, very pleased with the way that's looking. Anyway, this started off as a quick uh, handy hint, if you like, about buying those aluminium trays, which I still think are re very reasonably priced compared to the plastic ones. Um, and as I said, you can have them made to measure, so they'll fit neatly in any situation you have. It turned from that into a bit of a planter, but there we go. Well, I'll leave you there. Have a good day and uh, I'll be back soon.